This is what we believe virtual reality to be, but its world is much more diverse and ever more expanding. In the words of academic professionals, before we attempt to define virtual reality, we should first say what it is not. Virtual reality is often defined as either telepresence, enhanced or augmented reality, or the devices it uses, rather its purpose or function. So what exactly is virtual reality? In terms of functionality, virtual reality is a simulation in which computer graphics is used to create a realistic looking world. But virtual reality is also real-time interactivity, the type of activity where a computer is able to detect any individual's input and change the virtual world instantaneously, which then creates a captivating simulation. Defining virtual reality also comes with diving back into the past, a way to understand its technological evolution and what it has become now, especially its role within games and cinema, as this is the focus of this video, so let's dive in. The earliest attempt at virtual reality were 360 degree murals from the 19th century to then the stereoscope in 1838. The design principles welcomed in Charles Reedstone's research with the stereoscope over time allowed mankind to slowly but surely create ever richer ways to stimulate our senses. The 20th century allowed a great takeoff with the arrival of the electronics and computer technology never seen before in history. In the mid 50s, modern helix sensorama allowed the first time for stimulation of all the human senses not just sight and sound. It featured stereo speakers, a stereoscopic 3D display, fans, small generators and a vibrating chair, allowing for the first time for an individual to fully immerse in within a film, paving the way for current cinematographers and movie directors within our time. This then transitioned to the first ever VR head mounted display in the 1960s, the Sword of Democles and then artificial reality, where such technology enabled people to communicate with each other in a responsive computer-generated environment despite being miles apart. This history all leads to 1987, where virtual reality the name was born. Jaron Lanier, founder of the Visual Programming Lab, coined the term virtual reality. And through his research, VPL research, Jaron developed a range of virtual reality gear, being the first company to sell virtual reality goggles. So now history lessons over. It is now well past the 1980s and the first 15 years of the 21st century have seen huge changes and advancements in the development of virtual reality. Both computer technologies and the rise of smartphones have welcomed a generation of practical virtual reality devices, and for gaming industries they have continued to drive the development of consumer reality in a persistent manner. As VR is unlike any channel to date, it is highly immersive and intimate, with a future integrated with social and the internet of things. The field of virtual reality has transitioned into work influenced by video games and thus now influences that industry as well. Because much of the research and development being conducted in the games community parallels the virtual reality community efforts as it is, has the potential to affect a greater audience. This is where cinematic industries cross with gaming industries as recent years have uncovered the efforts of creating a game parallel to those when creating a movie. In recent years, VR technology has been proven highly prominent with real examples of Hollywood film industries adapting virtual reality technology into their films, with one film in particular being Ready Player One. Directed by Steven Spielberg and released late March 2018, Ready Player One was first a novel created in 2011 by American author Ernst Kleene and the film was an adaptation that was able to bring worldwide virtual reality inside and outside the film. Now forget Ready Player One for one second and take a look at Michael Zeider describing designing a game. 
These aspects within game design and gameplay experience, as shown by Michael Zyder, can be seen as an influence and propagator for the production and experience behind the Ready Player One movie. Take a listen at the behind the scenes of Ready Player One and see the comparison behind game pedagogy. This is the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. When I was writing Ready Player One, the virtual reality was still this science fiction thing in the future that we didn't have. And now we actually had the HTC Vive on the set. Wow. So it was amazing that the virtual reality technology that has come about just since the book has been published was used in the movie. This is the coolest thing ever. One of the interesting things about a virtual production is that you're creating all of these sets and characters in the computer. And the great thing about that is that we could bring Steven in and he would put on the really high fidelity headset VR and we could load up that environment and he could scout it virtually. Oh, wow. And of course, because he's a filmmaker, as soon as he would start walking around a location, he would start thinking about shots. I needed to know where to put my camera. So they created an avatar for me that you never get to see. But my avatar had a virtual camera. I could either do frame grabs or I could do actual shots by walking through the virtual sets. I'm getting shots on a V cam in a V world. This is crazy. And the Steven Spielberg and his team encompassed various aspects of VR during production as they wanted to get a better feel for the CG environments. With this, VR allowed them to adjust lighting, consider camera angles, the movie's look and feel, and just like the characters in the movie, they entered the virtual environment. Before the film became anything, the production designer and his team began by collecting reference images to spark inspiration before sketching ideas and concept art. For the parts of the film set in the real world, the art department turned these sketches into blueprints, mapping out physical sets. Just like Michael Zyder describes game production. The only difference, Ready Player One was already a pre-existing storyline, and instead of being a video game where one must physically follow and play with the storyline, audiences were immersed in a visual stimulation aka a new era of VR technologically aided movies. But the overall included element of virtual reality in both game design and filmmaking processes opens up a huge potential for wider application, as they are overall defined as story, art and software. With Ready Player One being a prime example of this change, we are starting to see, in terms of technology, that could potentially give us access to virtual worlds like the Oasis. We start to consider how immersion will suddenly affect individuals everywhere. We are already aware that immersion into game systems exists, and today there are 2.6 billion gamers, which in the VR first future, much of our lives will have become gamified in a virtual world. So perhaps then Ready Player One isn't as bizarre as we may think. This is also important in the aspect where these current technologies produces a new kind of film production and experience, which changes the spectator's relationship with the content. Virtual reality has now created the feeling of immersion in the world seen on screen and inside viewing of the film. Today, the significance of watching a film may also become the closest thing to virtual reality, and with the production of both video games and films like Ready Player One immersing in VR technologies, this is just more of the evidence that shows the realisation of this alternate, fully accessible virtual world may just be a matter of time.